David Kennedy, father of rhinology in the U.S., last year at the Summer Sinus Symposium said, topical therapies is a future of treatment for chronic sinusitis. Big statement. So we're going to talk about how to get it there, steroids, antibiotics, and potential biofilm busters in six minutes or less. And this is the problem. You have a wide open maxillary antrostomy. That was on the right. On the left side, you've done your surgery. You're happy. They heal up. Great. But it's pus and pus and more pus. And it's like, why? This isn't fair. I've done a nice antrostomy. It's wide open. Why is it stuck? And now, more importantly, what do I do? Do I put sprays up there, nebulizers up there? We know from many, many studies, those don't penetrate the sinuses. In fact, irrigations don't penetrate the sinuses unless we've done sinus surgery. And that's a key thing to remember. I see a lot of use of nebulizers and sprays in the community, especially by our allergy colleagues. So it's important to think about using this large volume, low pressure devices. And a recent review looked at this. They said, yeah, you gotta do sinus surgery first, otherwise it's, the fluid's not gonna get in. You have to use high volume, as Ray talked about, you have to flood these sinuses. And then the head down position, like this little guy right here, right? That's the idea, but if you want to get the fluid into the frontal sinuses, you have to fill the tank from the top to the bottom. Uh, switching gears rapidly, topical steroids, pedestinite irrigations. If you're not doing it, please. The one thing I ask you to do after this course, use pedestinite irrigations. Comes in lots of forms. Talk with your compounding pharmacist because this stuff should be relatively cheap. Here's my patient, uh, aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease. This is eight months after I did a full house fest. Well, not quite a full house fest, into his frontals. He had horrible polyps before. He comes in, he's awful. I put him on bedesonide for two months. That's it, and they're gone. So five years ago, that was my N of one study that changed my practice. It's safe. It doesn't suppress the hypothalamic pituitary axis doesn't increase our eye pressures, doesn't increase glucose. Ray's group even says that it works. Decreases not 22, improves lung Kennedy endoscopy scores. But uh-oh, Brent's study said it doesn't work. Oh no, Ooh, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So what about topical antibiotics? Let's, uh, let's talk about that. There are zero guidelines that say you should ever be using topical antibiotics. So should we? Well, the ICAR, Guideline says, no, not only no, but they recommend against. It's not even an option. Well, it's because, you know, you look at the cost is moderate to high. So PJ published this about Staph aureus, and they gave patients mupiracine irrigations uh, versus saline irrigations. And everybody who got the mupiracine irrigation, it eradicated the Staph versus very little for the mupiracine. So they concluded that the mupiracine irrigations were effective. This is an interesting study, pretty short follow-up but it was still pretty effective. So we said, well, let's look at mupiracine and povidone iodine, which is dirt cheap, and compare that to saline. We randomized 22 patients in each of these three groups. So 66 patients were randomized total. It wasn't blinded because the patients were mixing it up, but there was no way to blind it. Iodine looks like iodine, mupiracine looks like mupiracine. Uh, and what we found is essentially a fairly negative study, except the culture negativity was much better in the mupiracine group. It eradicated 70% of the staph or strep versus 50% roughly in the povidone iodine and saline. It was very well tolerated, but it didn't improve patient uh, response, didn't improve SNOT20 or the Lund Kennedy. And that was a problem. Part of it is, uh, so you need to remember it's an option but the sinuses have to be opened. It does give us access to deliver IV antibiotics like tobramycin uh, for pseudomonas if they can't tolerate a fluoroquinolone. It's really hard to get insurance companies to cover it though. Um, and it does avoid GI distress. Biofilm, this is a nice graphic representation of biofilm. What is biofilm? Bunch of cells within a matrix of polysaccharides. It's the city of pus, city of cells, and it makes it resistant to the environmental stressors. This neat study in Peer showed that Manuka honey targets the biofilm, actually causes eradication uh, and a bactericidal. So we said, let's do a randomized study on this. Half the patients got Manuka honey irrigations, the other half didn't. And we randomized just, uh, I think it was 49 patients to both arms. We used Medi honey, which is the world's most expensive Manuka honey. It's gamma radiated, medicine quality Manuka honey. We had a nice uh, grant from the company to supply it to patients. Did it work? Well, everybody got better. That's the good news. It's also the bad news because the saline group got better too. 
There was no significant improvement when we compared Manuka honey versus saline in the SNOT-22, Lund, Kennedy, or culture negativity. And part of that was most of these patients were also getting oral antibiotics and steroids. So when we did a subgroup analysis to look at just the patients who got Manuka honey, still no change in endoscopy and CT score, or Lund Kennedy endoscopy score, but the culture negativity, 50% of the pathogens were gone after Manuka honey irrigations versus saline irrigations, 50%. So there's something there. This is a video showing a patient who came in, uh, qualified for the study. They got oral antibiotics, prednisone, and Manuka honey. All of a sudden, life's good. And then they came back though, two months later with another sinus infection, took the same antibiotics, same steroids, but they're still full of pus. And they're asking me, I want more Manuka honey. We couldn't give it to them because they were out of protocol. So what's next? Bacteriophage. PJ Wormwald's doing a, a bunch of research with this. There's some companies doing it. These are viruses to attack Staph aureus. No antibiotics. Photodynamic laser therapy to attack the bacteria. No antibiotics. And then using probiotics to treat the sinuses. Those are all possibilities, but remember this caution that our group published about six years ago now. Zinc gluconate-induced olfactory loss. Only Zycam of all 22 medications we tested actually destroyed olfactory tissue. So you have to be cautious what you're asking your patients to squirt up the nose. It's not benign. So in conclusion, topical therapies for CRS do require prior sinus surgery. Deliver it with a high volume, low pressure system. Use topical steroids, they work. Uh, irrigations sh uh, with antibiotics uh, show promise. Manuka honey, not the panacea, but there is something there. Everything's off label. Tell your patients if, it's st if it hurts, stop. And definitely give them all written instructions of how to use it. Uh, and then finally, this is an advertisement for the ARS Summer Sinus Symposium. I'm uh, co-chairing this with Mark Dubin and Doug Ray. This is the classic Chicago course, but it's moved to Washington, D.C. this year. Um, it's free if you're an ARS member. Free, yeah. Rhea, you like opened your eyes when I said free. You're right, it's free. Uh, but it's great. It's a really hands-on course. It's three days in D.C. If you've been thinking about taking your family to D.C., I strongly encourage you uh, to register, which just opened up yesterday. And then just as importantly, next year in July 2018, the course is coming here. And it will not be weather like this. It's going to be beautiful sunshine. So I uh, strongly encourage you to do that. Definitely sign up for to be an ARS member first, though, so that the registrations.